Hey, come on. Come on. Welcome to the project, everybody. Today we have a fun, fun project. So as you can see, it is a tool that has quite rightfully gained its place in our history and it's quite the dangerous tool. I, I, I've never owned a chainsaw before. I have ran chainsaws, but you know, it's just, it's a tool that I haven't quite needed. And I saw this one come up and I've been wanting to get one. This was really cheap, honestly, super cheap. But of course, like everything, uh, it, it has some problems. So we need to figure out those problems, uh, but I'm super excited to see if we can get this running. As you can see, it's a, it's a home light Z3300 uh, with a 14 inch bar on there. I thought there was like a chain break on that, but no, they have this pivoting for no reason. Um, and there's a few other things that right off the bat I can tell are wrong with it, but we can turn the motor over. So at least that that's a positive. And the guy that I bought it from, he said, oh, it was running and then he probably left bad gas in it or something and then it stopped running. But there's a couple other things that we got to fix real quick. But first, if you know me, I don't really like dirty tools. <laughs> so we're gonna have to take this apart and make sure everything's dry and clean before we use it already. So let's just friggin' wash the crap out of it and get it looking a lot nicer than this. You guys can see, yeah, there's... There's a bit of uh, a bit of grime on there. There's the bottom side. Let's go give it a bath. So if you guys didn't know, our entire shop is actually heated, in the winter it's heated by a wood furnace right there. And it's really cheap and really nice, honestly, kind of living in the middle of the city. It's nice to have something as old school as that. It's cheap heat for the shop, and though it may be kind of hard to get going, I, I do like this setup. But what that means is that I actually have a stockpile of some wood out here. That's nice. So the reason that's important right now, I mean, I haven't had a chainsaw up till up till, you know, a couple days ago, and it's not even working. So uh, it'll be nice to have the chainsaw to kind of help manage some of this wood if I need to lop off, you know, smaller pieces or anything. But right now it's really important because this weekend I'm actually going camping. So I need to grab some of this wood, uh, chop up some so we can uh, have a bit of a fire and actually cook our food this weekend. So let's, uh, let's chop some wood. I will say I have not chopped wood in uh, quite some time and I am by no means an expert. So most of this stuff honestly is really annoying to chop. And I bet you none of it's really gonna split. Oh well, we will see what happens. Nothing like a really tiny one to try to chop first. I need practice. See, like if I had a chainsaw, I'd cut that off flat. The people who gave me this wood just did not make it easy to chop. So you're like, this guy's not even gonna budge, but we'll give it a shot.
that should be at least enough for uh, one night, one round of hot dogs, so. Well, it's definitely looking a lot better already. Let's actually get uh, some pig mat for it. Yeah, so it's already looking pretty good. I will say almost every control on this is just feeling pretty gross. Uh, this throttle lock or whatever it's, so the safety thing here, yes, if it's out and if it's in, you can kind of do that, but the throttle feels really gummy. I guess the only thing that feels pretty good is kill switch and the pull cord. Let's pull this, the, the bar off and stuff and go from there. That sounds like a pretty good spot. Yeah, that's good enough. I was looking for parts and I couldn't see it, but this saw was designed for a break. We've got this drum here that the chain rides on, and this is like a clutch, and then the outside of the drum, you typically have a band that like clamps on it to stop it for the uh, chain stop. And this, I'm like, why would it move? Well, if you look here, we've got grooves. We've got grooves coming all the way down here, all the way around, a groove for where the brake band would, would sit, and it just looks like it's broken on this. So maybe I'll see if I can get parts. I do need to see if I can loosen. Oh, I guess, okay. Chain tensioner right there. That's something to remember. These screws go into plastic. You can just tell by the threads. So, I mean, that's the kind of quality we're working with with home light. The main handle for the whole thing just goes into plastic, but I kind of knew that coming into this. So down in here is the fuel tank and I can see the fuel filter is just loose in there, yep. So the fuel filter fell off of the fuel line down in there. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad though. So that's the choke right there. And I don't know if you guys can tell this, but like, it's completely stuck. Like, I, I can't move it. And I started going like this and look at that. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're gonna need to clean the carb. I think that's for sure. I might just kind of plug this up and pressure wash it again, but with that plugged up and uh, go from there. Oh man, that's so stuck. How is that so stuck? That would explain why the throttle doesn't feel good at all. Choke is moving again. So that, that's a positive at least. All right, let me shove some stuff in there. Maybe I'll take off this little plate too.
Now that we have it cleaned up pretty good, it's finally time to start tackling the biggest issue with this, and it's this car being completely and utterly gunked up. Bad fuel in there has really done a number on it. I need to get this carb out. There's a few things I don't honestly understand right now. These little things right here, it almost looks like, like uh, some adjustments I could make for high and low speed maybe, but we'll have to look at it when we get into there. But right now I just kind of need to get it off. And I did notice down below there is something kind of interesting. You guys see this tube right here? I was like, what in the world does it go to? And it's like, like way down there. Hopefully I can get it to kind of focus down there. It's like super gunky. It's like the rubber's just disintegrated a bit. Yeah, maybe it got too hot. Look at that. <laughs> the tubing is just like melting. It's like marshmallow. So anyway, so kind of need to figure out that. That might just be like an overflow tube, but it uh, definitely has seen better days. I will admit that. So we do have some cleaning to do up down in there. And I think that's just from gas overflowing out. But here's the carb and uh, yeah, I mean, as I work the choke a bit more, sure enough, that's uh, it's really stiff. And the throttle, I mean, we can't move that at all. I guess, here, let's try taking some pliers and seeing if... Ugh. Yeah. Yep, that's, that's not wanting to move at all. Well, let's start taking it apart, I guess. The varnish gas in here is just crazy. All these little pieces are just stuck. That's wild, that's, that's just straight up wild. It's like syrup literally inside of there. One thing I find interesting here is uh, there's like a little screen in there, almost like a little fuel filter somehow. Up here there doesn't seem to be nearly as much varnish or varnished gas. Gonna take off this plate right here to try to get better access to underneath it so I can clean up all the gunk down there. There's that seal. So here there's like some rubber sealant or whatever like to seal the surface and this whole bottom one just literally gooped out all over the place. And that's what all this goop is at the bottom. We'll just try to clean it out a little bit and put it back. Okay, so after cleaning out that whole bottom piece, the fuel tubing is just, it's like rubber. I mean, it's so far gone. <laughs> so, I've bought new fuel tubing. Hopefully, oh, hopefully it's the right size. Seems about the right size. Yeah, this should work. So, we've cleaned out that. Let's uh, put this plate back on and continue forwards. So 
So I also got a couple new filters. Okay, so if you guys didn't know how these things work, so these are fuel filters on the bottom and you have a bunch of extra tubing inside the tank here. So that way you can orientate the tank any way and they have weights in them. So then the weight will have it flop to the bottom of the tank no matter what direction. So we just need to get the line, like the size of the line correctly. So that way it can kind of just flop around inside of there. Also from Jack's small engine, I was able to get a new uh, air breather or like, what is it called? It's to get all the air out of the line so you can sit here and pump this until there's no more air. So we have a new one of those. So it's just, let's get the tubing correct and go from there. So looking at the diagrams and looking at this, if I put my thumb there, it's hard to push and that's hard for it to retract. So this is in and that's out. So what we need is we need an in from the gas tank. So we'll go in from the gas tank onto here. And then this guy is going to come over here. So now the gas tank goes directly into the carb on this big nipple here, which might be a little bit of a struggle to get this over, but we'll get it. And then all we need left is we can use this extra tubing and we'll go from the purge bulb into the small nipple on the gas tank. So let's get the throttle hooked back up and we'll get the choke hooked backed up. <music> Lastly, what we need to do, I'll probably run it without the filter just to see if we can get it going but I do need a way to pull start it. So we're gonna put together this side right here, um, maybe put the handle back on. That way we can at least try starting it and whatnot. Okay, watch right here. Oh, yep, yeah, see, sprays gas everywhere. So there is a hole right there. Well, choke on. I think we've sufficiently bled it. Let's see how to best go about this. Yeah, maybe I do need that bar on. All right.
Hey, it's ran a little bit. Sure, there's a little bit more that we need to figure out, but whew, I think that's a good stopping point for tonight. Let me do a little bit more research. Get back to you next time. I've done a bit more research on this, and uh, so sure enough, I have the fuel lines connected up correctly right now, where this bigger one is a pickup straight from the tank. And then what the fuel bulb here does is it pulls from this smaller nipple right there, and it pushes it back into the tank. So it's like drawing through the carburetor. And I kind of figured that out from like there's one way valves and whatnot. And I looked around and this whole upper section here is, um, is a fuel pump, which makes sense. Cause I saw the one way valves in there. Like I did, uh, or like we saw on the generator, if you've seen that video. I also figured out over here, these are our adjustment needles and we have a high speed and a low speed needle. I guess that's pretty common for chainsaws. Um, and so this is pretty typical. It looks like it's working like we think. Hopefully one of these jets isn't uh, clogged up, but I do know how to make some adjustments now. One other thing I also figured out is uh, rebuild kits for these. If I have screwed it up by using B12 uh, carburetor cleaner on here, again, I took off all the gaskets and stuff that I could before cleaning them, but still there are some other pieces in there that I might have destroyed doing that. If I have, then I'll buy a rebuild kit, but we'll see if we can get it running today like this. I mean, it was kind of starting up, but now that I understand all the adjustments and whatnot, Hopefully we can get it fully running today. So, yep, <laughs> hopefully that explains it. Let's take it outside where it's a little bit cooler. See if we can get this running decent. That was a lot of yanking on this. So what did I just find out? <laughs> so after sweating quite a bit trying to pull this, if you guys saw in that last clip, it would not start. It started a little bit last night and I think that's because I had the tubes hooked up wrong. Um, and I think I finally understand what the issue here is. And I was a little worried about it. So essentially I think we need to buy a new carb. There is a slight hope that something will work, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to buy a new carb. Even a rebuild kit isn't going to have it work well. So what you saw there was I kept yanking on it and it didn't really start. But I've, if I do a little bit of starting fluid, it kicks right off. So two strokes, you need to be really careful with starting fluid because the, the fuel that you typically put in here will have oil in it, which will lubricate the motor. Starting fluid, no lubrication. So you want to be very careful about using starter flu starting fluid. But here, yeah, one tiny squirt poof, kicks off. And then nothing, nothing, nothing. One tiny squirt, boom, kicks off. So I think what is happening is we're not getting fuel. We're getting fuel through the entire carb except for through the jets, through the needles right here. And off camera, I even took it apart and recleaned it a bit and just double checked everything and all the passages and everything seemed great except there's one spot that I can't get to. So let's pull this apart and I'll show you what I'm gonna try doing while I go see if I can order a new carb. So I have learned pretty much how exactly these carbs work. So we're sitting like this, this is towards the crankcase and this is for the air coming in, like the uh, air intake. We've got our choke here on the front and we've got our throttle here on the back. So that's wide open, that's uh, throttle closed. So this top section here, which is right here, this has uh, like a little plastic piece in there and that's where I was seeing these one-way valves. So this top section here, it pulls in crankcase like pulsing to act as a fuel pump to then pump fuel down into this bottom section. So this is what I would consider like the float or the bowl, but it can run in any direction here. So right there, there's a little spring and a, uh, and a plunger to help close it off. So that way it'll stop pumping fuel. What would it do? It'll hold the fuel in there, but then we have this little diaphragm that can push up on it to let more like fuel out or fuel in. Um, so that's all fine and dandy. What's kicking me? Oh, and then this is that little hole right there with this tube is where we suck fuel in to get fuel 
or air bubbles out of the whole system. Right here, this little brass piece, um, that hole is what feeds gas to the entire motor. So that hole then goes into a bunch of little tiny holes in here, both for the high speed and the low speed needle. So that hole is what is clogged. And for the life of me, I can't figure out how to take it apart further to go clean out that hole. Um, I've heard, so I've been using B12 a little bit because B12 will destroy all your gaskets. It's really aggressive, but um, I've taken all my gaskets out. I even, I'll even take out that little check valve. See, like that, there's the little check valve. So I shouldn't have any more gaskets except for, I have heard someone say, don't shove anything down in there because you can ruin the seals down in there. So if there is rubber down in there, then maybe yes, I have screwed it up. But even then, it's been clogged. Since I've had it, you saw how gross it was. So down in there, it's been really clogged and I have no way to unclog it. So while I go figure out if I can order a new carb, I'm gonna do a last, last ditch effort and I have B12 in here. It's a little dirty, but I'm gonna let it sit in there and just soak this whole bottom half of the carb with no seals or anything in there for it to destroy. And I don't know, I'll leave it overnight and just see if, if that'll fix it. So yeah, we'll just have it soak the whole bottom half and hopefully soaking in this We'll get it to uh, finally unclog. If it unclogs, then this carb should work great. You saw how quick it fired up, so. All right, well, I'm gonna go figure out if I can order a new carb. Not a rebuild, but just a whole new carb because I can't fix that. It hasn't been all night. I was gonna maybe let this sit over all night, but started looking to try to find carbs and I did find a breakdown of this carb and there is one spot that I haven't ventured yet. So I figured if this carb is the lost cause, we might as well venture there. We'll do one last test to make sure it's not just suddenly flowing amazing. Let's see, it's that one. All right, so there is a little panel right here that I haven't pried up and I don't know if I can, but if I can get underneath it, then that might be. So that was a bit of a wild ride. So I don't know if it was the soak or what, but I did start getting air to go through that little spot into the Venturi or into, you know, that passage. See, so look. So that means we should be able to get gas from here into the actual motor. So it should start up now. So let's put this back together and try it out real quick. Okay, let's see. See if it actually goes now. <laughs> Choke on, it's there, we've bled it.
works. Ish. We got it running, <laughs> but not the best. If you saw when I could like slowly put on the throttle and slowly bring, bring up the revs, but if I tried like blipping the throttle or like doing hard acceleration, it would just choke out and fall on its face. And I believe that's because the high speed needle, this red one, where it has the H right there, the high speed needle was still clogged. So like the low speed was kind of clogged, but the high speed was definitely clogged and so when I would full throttle or open up the throttle a lot more like that when I'd whop, uh, it was really lean it was too lean but I could like slowly bring it up to the higher rpms but we'll see I left it in a while longer and I think it cleared out a lot more and so I have it back together one note I wanted to do was I've kind of screwed up I uh, I've been like bolting it on there without the filter but these nuts, they have the little grooves on the back, so I've kind of cut some grooves into there. But hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, I'll put this on this time. And then one last thing, too, is, I don't know if you noticed, but I was trying to adjust the idle down on it, which is right here, this screw. It holds open the throttle butterfly valve. Uh, it holds it open, so you can screw it in and hold it open wider and wider to adjust the... The idle and I brought that all the way down where this screw wasn't even touching and it still wouldn't idle it was idling too high my bad and after looking at it I loosened that screw to try to get the seat better I didn't move it at all but I also looked from the back side here and I did see some light so I also have a new pointer I'm gonna try this <laughs> so what happened is right here you see that hole and then it's covered by the bar that hole, this whole plate was actually rotated counterclockwise. And that hole, you could see a little bit of light through it. So I think that's why my idle was up too high is because this, this whole thing had shifted a bit and air was getting through that, which was causing it to be able to idle higher. So I've positioned this back so that hole's completely covered up. I have it all the way closed. So we're gonna have to readjust the idle on there. But I think we're done. I think, I, I, I'm pretty confident it should run pretty good. Well, other than needing to adjust it. <laughs> it should start up, like I shouldn't have to take this apart again. So with that, let's, uh, let's put it back together. I'm even confident enough. I'm gonna put the bar and stuff back on and we'll get to tuning it and testing it out. So let's get to that.
Well, if you saw our clutch isn't really working. The carburetor seems to be working a lot better, but our clutch does not. So we're going to take this all apart and uh, see what's up with it. To be fair, I haven't touched the clutch. I just assumed it was probably fine. Bar oil seems to be working, at least the pump and everything there. So that's good. So uh, if you didn't know how these clutches work, this goes straight to the, uh, to the crankshaft and then there's this big spring with these shoes. So as it spins, the centrifugal, blah, centrifugal force pushes these pads out because the spring is holding it in. And then it uh, rubs against the outside of this drum. Bada bing, bada boom. It's a clutch. So see right now the shoes aren't grabbing. So what was happening there was uh, this was still grabbing and I thought maybe I just need to clean it out in here or something. But what it turns out is I'm pretty sure it's this needle bearing right here in the middle. Because uh, the shaft right here, the shaft could use a little bit of cleaning. And it was dry as the Sahara Desert down in there. And when I pulled it out, I did the big no-no and I let all of the needles out. So... Uh, I gotta try to put them back in and uh, hopefully I have all of them. I don't think I've missed any, but we're so close to cutting chain with the chainsaw, cutting wood. Do you guys see all the needles down in there? So I just got to try to keep putting them in there. Just kind of put a dab of grease just to kind of hold them in and they were dry, they were so dry before. This grease should make it so I can flip it upside down and then they won't fall out. Okay, there we go. All the needles are back in. I'm gonna actually set that off on the side right now. And we're gonna try cleaning up this shaft a little bit. There you have it, home light 14, 14 inch bar chainsaw, the Z3300. And uh, we got it up and running again. I thought I'd have to buy a new car, but nope. It's uh, running pretty decent right now. There's a couple other smaller things we kind of need to tune up on it. But for now, I mean, this is a really nice, small, easy chainsaw. I think that'll do it for this project. I need to get a bit more uh, PPE and a bit more practice with this thing. Um, cause that was a little sketchy there. I need a good way to hold logs, but we did get the chainsaw running. So glad you guys could come on the project with us this time. I hope to see you guys next time, but until then, I will see you later. <laughs> Bye.